to uh, Elven Home. Uh, sorry to scare the life out of you by appearing two uh, videos running. Um, it wasn't my original intention, but uh, it makes sense now that I've got the rest of the recording done. Uh, this is just a short introduction. The uh, video is uh, largely about the fitting of sound to the Farish Castle Earl of Dunraven. Those of you that are skilled in fitting sound may want to skip on and about this point. Um, I'll put the timings in that will allow you to move on to the back end of the uh, recording of the video where I um, show the castles running. I talk a little bit about some changes that I've made to the raised area following some uh, comments that I had on my last video. Uh, and then a, a short running session towards the end. So uh, I hope you enjoy the video, particularly if you're interested in, in uh, seeing how sound is fitted to one of the new Farish castles uh, and uh, the other things that I've been up to. I'll uh, speak to you again in a moment. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is the section where I fit the sound to the Earl of Dunraven, which is one of the Graham Farish Castle class uh, steam engines. Um, you'll have already seen uh, Nanny Castle running around. And when I got Nanny Castle and looked at the instructions of how to fit sound, I thought, oh, that should be fairly straightforward. Once I screw my courage, we'll give it a go. Uh, and as you will have seen in the last video, I bought the necessary stuff to do that at Wally, and I promised that uh, the next video would have me fitting it together. I've never wired sound into anything before. Uh, this looked so simple that even I should be able to do it. Um, the instructions that come, which you see in front of you, that come with the uh, with the engine, with all castles, this is exactly the same uh, as I got with Nanny Castle. This is the one out of, of Dunraven. Show you that you remove the tender body um, to access the decoder, the PCB with the blanking plug on it. Um, and that then it's a straightforward matter, essentially, of unscrewing the PCB, turning it over, and there should be two points on the left and right to which you put the wires, which go to your speaker. And that the speaker itself fits into a recess already uh, provided in the tender body. Um, now I've already taken the tender body off and done one or two things just to make sure I've seen what's there to see how, real, <laughs> how much like this it looks. Um, so what you now see below are all the bits that I supposedly need to be able to uh, to put this in. This is the sound decoder here. That's that's the next 18 uh, sound decoder. That's my sugar cube speaker. Um, that's just the coal load off the tender which pops out. So I took it out rather than dropping it. Um, so we can move that out of the way. Uh, here's the tender body, which did indeed come away quite easily. It, it wasn't difficult to pull the two apart as uh, you held the wheel set and then pulled the tender body off. And I don't know if you can see, if I get the light right, you can see that angled recess up here, which is where the speaker fits in. And you put the speaker in with the wires to the rear of the tender. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and I've already had a, a little test with the speaker and it, and it fits really quite snugly. Um, the speaker comes without the normal housing because it the tender is, is the housing and it has this gasket around it. When I peel that off that will have the glue that will stick that in there. With the two points for soldering you can just about see those there. I think it's good. I tried this once before and it refused to focus but it's doing it now. It's behaving. So the wires get put onto there, onto the back of the PCB, put the next the decoder in, put it all back together and it should work in theory. Um, these are just my two lengths of speaker wire, very fine wire, but uh, I've got to get to bear the ends of those yet, but never mind, we'll sort, of sort that out. And then the engine itself, I'll just come in a bit further. Let's just do that. Right, that's what I saw when I took the tender body off. I've done the only other thing I've done is to unscrew the PCB at the top here. Um, if I remove the screws, one of the things, I, just as a little tip, others may have worked it out, that I've started doing, the cloth that this is sitting on is a microfiber cloth. Um, and they're made with 
the way they're made is to actually grip dust. But one of the things I've discovered is if you're working on anything with small screws uh, and the screw hits this cloth, it will not move. And I'm forever dropping screws, bouncing them off my um, desk and then spending time trying to recover them from various parts of the carpet. Uh, but I found this invaluable when you're working closely with small bits because if you drop it from a uh, tweezers or something, these microfiber cloths just sort of grab hold of it and say, where do you think you're going? Which is very useful. So, I've removed the screws as it said in the instructions and the instructions, you will recall, um, in the way of these uh, illustrations, let me put this back into focus, there we go. This image makes it look very easy. You take that out, flip it over the top. This image has some more wires attached to the PCB. And when you get to here, as you will see, I'll move that out of the way for the moment, uh, there are indeed four wires, as you might expect, attached to the PCB. So soldering will not be as straightforward as simply t flipping this over on its back uh, because those wires on this side, that's as far as I can move them without uh, pulling the wires. And obviously you can't take those wires off. So the, the soldering is going to have to be done uh, bending it left and right um, as I need. I think what I'm going to do is solder to the speaker first because that will be the more straightforward. And then I can solder um, to the PCB and then I can fit the speaker into the um, tender um, and hopefully put it all back together and it will work. Now what I'm going to do is, is move the camera now and just have it filming me. How much of that you will see, I don't know because I don't know how long this is going to take and I certainly don't want you sitting there for hours on end um, waiting. So I'll probably do something now with music over it to uh, whilst I'm I'm working on it, but I will make sure that at key points um, when I edit this that you see what it is I've been doing because I, I, part of what I do this is that those that are new just there are things that, that sort of I've been putting off because I think oh I don't think I'm good enough to do that uh, and I've discovered when I actually go and do them that a lot of them are, mo are much easier to do than you fear. Uh, so if I can help somebody who's just starting out not to fear and actually to get on because uh, once you do these things, it's a great sense that, oh, now there's more that I can do. So I'll, uh, I'll stop this section now and come back in um, once I've got the soldering iron up to heat and I'm about to uh, start soldering the uh, wires onto the speaker. I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, well, the first part is done. Um, it's just a few minutes after the last time I spoke to you. Um, one thing which I hadn't realised, uh, and it nearly um, ruined everything, is that this bit here of the speaker, as you, as you, when you think about it, of course it is, is magnetised. Uh, and the ends of a um, soldering iron is metal. And magnets and metal tend to attract. Um, however, uh, disaster, I hope, has been averted. If not, then I need a new speaker, but as they only cost £15, that's not the end of the world. But the two wires, as you can see now, are soldered on at the very ends of the, um, of the speaker. So the next bit is to bear the ends on here and solder them into the PCB. Now I think what I'm going to do is just leave the film running now and I'll edit it as I need uh, over the next, um, I hope, not very long, but we shall see. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with sound, but I'll just leave the thing running and we'll see where we go. Uh, so let's see what happens when we try and do the rest of this installation. I'll just come back out now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is install the speaker into the tender body. I think I've got long enough wire here that I can I can get around that. There may be actually a bit too long. Mm, which order? No, I won't do that. What I'll do first of all is just have a look. If that's in here, you have to do it with the speaker wires to the rear of the 
engine so that will sit in there. There is loads of space for the cable, perhaps a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is just trim these down and then we'll get set to work. And the easiest way to bear the ends was with the end with the blade of a of a knife. And then I'll tin the ends first and then we'll affix them to the PCB. Heaven help me. So that's, you can see there, that should, I don't know if I'm glint in the sun, no they won't, they won't even come into, oh, no, okay, that's not going to come into focus. They're bent, they're bed at the end there. A little bit of flux on each end. is an 18 watt um, soldering iron. I've read so many things about different powers of soldering watts. Anything up to 80 watts people say that you should use. Um, but I've, someone said no you only need 18 for this sort of job. Um, so that's what I'm going to take and do. I've got a very fine point on the so ring on and flux. Okay, so now the ends, again you probably won't be able to see those because they're so fine. The ends I have now got solder on them. Now the tricky bit. And lay the engine on its side and turn it round. Okay. Here we go, people. Appears to be on, hopefully. That's two. Stand it back up again now. Peel off the sticky gasket. Wires to the rear. Push into 
twice. Heaven help me. Okay, well, <clears throat> the only thing left to be done now is to put is to um, put the PCB and wire it back in and put the decoder in. So let's have a go at that. Move this on to here. Excuse me. <clears throat> right. Position this back into position. Rather handily, this retaining bar that the two uh, screws sit in will be, I think, very useful for lining this up. There's nothing worse than trying to line up some of these small screws on engines. But let's see. and it's something pinged right off but straight into that micro cloth which just gripped it as soon as it got hold of it. They're very common these micro cloths, they're used for dusters and all sorts of things but they do do the job. every day. Just have a very steady hand. There we go. There you go, my beauty. One slight thing we're going to do now is actually put the decoder in. The decoder seems to have some kind of sticky stuff holding it to it. There we go. Make sure that's all on. That must go on that way. Okay. At least this appears to be a much easier way to know how to fit things. I don't know if you've ever used the six pin. Well, you would have done. Um, I can never remember which, or, which way's up. That clipped out very simply. And there's a socket on the end of the next 18 decoder you can just see that beigey thing which goes into a recess and that is the fitting of your decoder he said that's it clicked in and fit now this is where I want to just see Make sure the wires aren't catching on anything. And just for the moment, pulling them up through the hole where the coal will be, just so that I can make sure they're not found on anything. And then I can pack them once I've got the tender body back on. Come on, my baby. There you go. Lovely. Come on. Good girl. There we go. Okay, 
<laughs> this is fun. Well, all being well, in theory, that should work, and we'll see if it does. See you in a minute. Okay, well as you can see, this is just a few minutes later. Um, slight panic, because when I started, uh, tried to start the engine off, nothing moved. And then I realised I'd plugged my uh, Gage Master uh, controller into the factory only slot, so nothing was moving anyway, which is jolly good. Um, can't imagine the uh, joy of when I uh, put it in the right way. So um, that, I'm not sure what time I started this, but I think in that's no more than 15, 20 minutes from talking to you at the beginning of the video to, the, uh, to this running. Um, that is very straightforward, and I hope it encourages others of you that may have bought uh, a castle to get the necessary. You choose as a place to go to, they'll help you get what you need to get. Um, and I'm really very pleased. So now this engine has to run in, so we will set it off on its way uh, to run in 30 minutes each way on about half speed. Um, and we'll move on to the next part of the video. So, uh, mind the doors. Well, there you have a, a running session with both castles running, um, with the sound on both of them. Very interesting that the sound uh, files are slightly different one to the other, which is rather good. As you can hear in the background, I've got them both uh, simmering away in the platform. Uh, they'll each be putting their... they have random noises that come in if they're just left sat for a while. So we'll see what they make in the background. Um, this last bit's fairly short, just to tell you where we are with, in terms of um, getting on with the scenic work. Um, and in particular, to talk a bit about the uh, area that you can see in front of you, the raised area to the right, which uh, I suspect most of you knew that I was going to change it from, the, um, from what was there before. Uh, every time I looked at the slightly warped um, foam board uh, I thought to myself well you might be able to budget but then I thought but you'd know that it wasn't uh, it wasn't right so uh, I have changed it and it's also allowed me um, to pick up something that one of my subscribers who commented on the last video Steve Williams suggested uh, which had not occurred to me at all which was that the end wall uh, that you can see with the buttresses, uh, that the end wall should be fixed to the board along with the tunnel portal so that the whole thing comes off. Um, and obviously the rock face will be, will be fixed, uh, which is just so much simpler. Um, so thank you very much, Steve, if you're watching again. That, uh, that idea um, I am going to do now. Um, the piece of wood that is now making the, the base is the back of an IKEA wardrobe, a uh, uh, bookcase, which came off a little while ago and was waiting for me to fix it on, but it's now given up its back for a far more nobler cause, namely where the church is going to stand uh, and obviously the station when I get round to doing that. Uh, and what you can see there, I'll, I'll take that off in a moment just to show you how I've braced underneath. It's nothing particularly spectacular. 
but it just gives me a nice flat surface. It's allowed me to cut round the um, port, the tunnel port, the three lane tunnel portal. Um, that sits in there quite nicely. Um, what I shall be doing is um, continuing this wall along here to raise it to the same level as here. Uh, probably a piece of wall in here before the rock face. Well, I'll redo the rock face completely. Um, it's not hard to do, so that's easy to do. And similarly, this portal I think I am going to leave firmly put in. Um, it's a bit more fragile than, than this one with the two holes in it, so I don't, I'm not really keen to be lifting it up and putting it down again. But that, that sits beautifully on top of there now. This sits beautifully in the, uh, in the space. This hedging, flexible hedging, which I bought, it, um, it is so flexible I can't make it stay where I want it to. But this, is, this will go along the edge here, so that will cover the edge on this side. Now there's a lich gate that goes with the church, which will sit here. Um, I'll bring the hedge in a bit here, because this is all going to be rough ground as it goes down to the rock face. Um, but this, I've got, plenty, I've got another packet of this, but I'm not sure I'll need it. I'll be able to trim, so that will give me the edge, and then I can grass this area. Um, it's amazing what you find yourself doing. Now, the other day I was looking at how you lay out a graveyard, because obviously the church is going to have a graveyard, and it's quite an old church, so one will expect quite a lot of gravestones. So I now know how to lay out a graveyard, so we'll be doing that. Um, trying to think and source a house that can go about here, which will be the vicarage, because obviously um, one would expect a vicarage with a church of this substantial size, uh, which will then allow me to have this area as I said, the road will come in with a, a large area here where the hearse and things will, will drop and wedding vehicles and anything else that may, may come in um, with the station here with a, a, a modest area in front of it because we are still talking about a period this is modelled roughly at the, at the change to, to BR from the, uh, the big four when private car ownership was not common um, so I don't, I don't need to do a great big car park there. That's, uh, that's just going to be pretty much access for, uh, for public service vehicles, if anything, to get in front of the station. Um, so that's the next thing to do, and to actually start using the uh, static grass and, and beginning to lay this area out, which I'm looking forward to getting on. And that's really where the focus will be uh, for the remainder of the year. Um, I doubt that I'll be able to get uh, another video up this year, so this is going to be uh, my opportunity for all those who've been following me as my subscribers. Um, nearly 500 as I speak, and, uh, uh, which I'm absolutely overwhelmed at. It's gone up quite considerably in the last uh, few weeks. I've just got the, the thing open here. Let's see if I can see how many subscribers we've got at the moment. Yeah, 491. Um, maybe if it goes over 500 before Christmas, I'll do, I'll, I'll do a short running session in celebration. Perhaps that's what we should do. Um, but thank you very much to all the new subscribers. Great to have you along. I uh, hope you're enjoying the video. And uh, particularly for you that are new starting out, I hope you really enjoy or just uh, see the benefit of the session, the section where we put the sound in, in uh, Earl of Dunraven. Um, that's emboldened me to try and do other things, which is all a good, all a good thing. So I'll just leave you with a, a few minutes of, uh, of running after this. Uh, and if I don't speak to you again, uh, all of you, I hope you have a, a very uh, Merry Christmas and I wish you all a happy and prosperous new year. And that uh, if Santa's bringing anything to you, it is invariably, or it is um, almost ex exclusively for the benefit of your own layouts. So uh, until we speak again, thanks very much for watching. Please um, like if you've liked the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed before. And if you've got any comments, please do let me have them. They're so useful. As I said, Steve Williams gave me an idea um, for the end here, which is going to work so much better. So I'm happy um, and I always make sure I reply to comments. So until we speak again, thanks very much and uh, I'll see you again. Bye bye.